I, um, I'm at, uh, actually you can see I'm not getting internet here. I'm at the convention center. I give my talk in uh, about an hour. Um, I thought before I just kind of finished up 11 2 and then I sent you an email though. I don't know when you'll get it because I'm having trouble connecting, but um, there's two problems I put on homeworks at 7 that don't really um, make sense as 11.2 problems, so I rewrote them as 11.2 problems because um, they're asking questions about um, not the sum. Um, let me write on my tablet. Um, in 11.2, we're really talking about uh, the sum of random variables, but in 11.5, we're going to be talking about the average of random variables. And so it's a slightly different, as you can see, I'm going to divide by n for an average. So the question is just slightly different. I mean, I can ask you about x bar, what's the probability of the average is something, or I could ask you something about what's the probability of the sum is something. So it's just a slight rewriting of the problem. And so I wrote an email to send it to you so you can see the difference. Um, I don't care if you already understand how to do x bar problems. If you took a statistics class, this probably makes sense to you. If not, um, this will follow exactly from what I've been doing in 11.2, and I will show you another example of those. So I was here yesterday. I was just saying if you use moment generating functions, there's a lot of nice facts. Um, and in general, anytime you sum a large enough number, which large kind of depends on the random variable. Um, the sum of them, so if I sum so many random variables together, um, you start getting a bell-shaped curve. Because if you think about it, when you sum things, um, if, even if a few values are extreme, you'll still get around the average. I mean, overall, you know, you sum enough things and you'll probably get around the same value because you're going to sum away outliers. And you start eventually getting down to a bell curve when you sum enough of these guys. So, you know, in statistics we say you need to sum 30 of them, but if you had me before or know this, this is not necessarily true. I'll show you a few pictures. Unfortunately, I can't get my exponential to work right now. I don't, I don't know, maybe I don't have enough power in my maple, but I know I changed my code, so I can show you number one and number two, and I gotta run three. Three takes like all day to run to get the maple to do the, the values. So, here I'm just showing you, if you have continuous random variables, they will converge to a normal when n gets big. So remember, um, a uniform is just a, you know equally likely anywhere, let's say, between 0 and 4. Um, if you add two uniforms, you actually get something. So imagine um, you have one of those uniforms and you add two of them together. Well, you're going to get values equally likely between 0 and 4, but what's going to happen is the most likely value to get would be, right, something in the middle here at 2. So when you add two of them together, you start getting the shape a triangular that goes from 0 to 8. Um, 8 is least likely and 0 is least likely because you would need two zeros or two fours to sum, but think of all the ways you could add on both sides of, um, sorry, both sides of 2 and get a number that adds up to 4. So two um, uniforms give you a triangular. When you add one more in, you still get something similar, but it starts to curve a little bit. It just starts to flatten there at the top a little bit. You add another one, so quickly a uniform converges to a normal. Other distributions take a y. That's why I wanted you to see the exponential. You know, you start off like uh, you start off like this. For sorry, that's not. What, it should start at zero. It starts off like this. You add two, you get a little bit of a bump. You add three, you get a little bit more of a bump moving out, and then eventually you will get this nice normal curve shape. So I'll show you for um, the uniforms. Let's see here is, let's go for the continuous one. Um, I think I even have all my code up here to show you this. I mean this is very, adding random variables is a very difficult procedure. I mean I, I wrote a program to do it. There's uh, actually the sum of two uniforms gives you that triangular shape. But I wanted you to see how fast it converges to normal. So this is just one uniform random variable right there, defined on the interval negative 2 to 2. And then I'm going to add two of them together, and I see a triangle. And then I'm going to add more and more and more. So I've, ri I've written an animation. It's pretty cool. Um, let me cycle it through 
and let me slow it down a bit or else it'll go very fast and let me play it. So n just keeps track of how many I've added together. This is just one and two. I think I go up to 10. I think that's it. Okay, let's play it. So nice, isn't that beautiful? Um, so there's one, two, three, four. So I put a normal curve there so you can judge. Um, again, you're just adding them. So add two, three, four, five, and you get back to normality. So add enough of anything together and you really do get back to normality. So let's actually close that one because that takes some energy there. Um, no. Let's go to the discrete one. So discrete, I'm just, I did a discrete uniform again. This is, um, equally likely anywhere between, I think I did negative three to three, and it's a uniform, so it's just sitting equally likely across here. I'm gonna add two, three, four, I think I go up to 10 again. I wonder if I have all the code. Yeah, see where I said be patient and wait? Um, yeah, I. that's the one with the exponential, I just can't get going. I've added um, six of them together. They started between negative three and three, so if I add six of them together, it's going to go between negative 18 and 18, but look how fast, again, this must only go to six, how fast it um, converges to normal. So um, let's cycle it again around, let's slow it down, let's play it. Nice. I mean, again, I, I wish I had that exponential, but I don't think I'm going to have enough computer power here to get that done so sorry but enough you know enough exponentials everything will converge so um, you might be like well what does that mean to me and this might I thought maybe I should do an example to help with um, what do you say problem the problems in the homework I have a little space there so let me make a, a quick example so example um, okay let X be a random variable with probability density function. Um, let's call it f of x equal to 2x um, between 0 and 1. You can check. Um, this is a valid probability density function. It integrates to 1 over this interval. Okay, so let's add. So, I mean, this is the distribution that looks like on 0 to 1. Right, it just looks like this line here. So I'm going to take random values from this distribution and add them together. So let x1, x2, let's go up to x20 be a random sample from this distribution. So all I'm saying is um, you have this distribution. Values are between 0 and 1. Um, I'm just going to, I mean, I'm going to pick 20 random values from here that could be anywhere then between 0 and 1, and then what I'm going to do is sum them together. So I'm going to let W, I guess I could have called it S, but okay, W is going to be the sum of these 20 random variables. And I can assure you W, by the end of it, is going to have a nice normal shape. Okay, so I know that W will be normal. I just know. I mean, I've added 20 of these together. Um, the new mean should be the mean plus the mean plus the mean plus the mean. So what's the mean of one of these? Um, let's find out. Uh, mu is equal to 2x times x dx from 0 to 1, right? That's the definition of mu. Ooh, so this is 2x squared. So what is this going to be? x cubed two-thirds from one to zero. So this is two-thirds, right? And if I'm adding 20 of them together, um, that's going to be two-thirds plus two-thirds. So um, up here, this will be two-thirds times 20 of them, right? That should be the new mean, because each of them I should get about the mean, the mean, the mean, the mean. So that's the new mean of my normal. And the variance should be well first I gotta find the variance of one of them ah uh, this isn't gonna be so this is gonna go from 0 to 1 2x times x squared dx minus 2 thirds squared oh can I go over to maple oh this is getting too long where is my maple um, so let's say f of x is equal to 2 times x. So integrate uh, f of x times x 
squared from x equals 0, 0 to 1 minus 2 thirds squared. What is this? 1 18th. Okay, nicely. Let's go back here. So one of them, uh, my pen is stuck, is uh, 1 18th. So um, 1 18th, I can add variances. So 1 18th, 1 18th, 1 18th. So 20 times 1 18th. And I want the standard deviation, so I take the square root. So I know w is going to have a bell-shaped curve with this is the mean and this is the standard deviation. So what's the question now? Um, what's the probability that w is going to be bigger than, let me see, I'm adding 20 of them together. Um, let's see. What's, I don't know, I'm just going to make up something. Um, what's the probability w is bigger than 15? Right, the sum of I took 20 of these in that interval and I'm adding them up. What's the probability I sum them up and they're bigger than 15? Well, I know w is normal, so I can just treat this. Uh, I can do a z score, so 15 minus uh, 2 thirds times 20 divided by square root of 20 times 1 over 18. This is a probability that z is bigger than, I don't know, I didn't figure it out. Go to a z table and there's my value. So I better cut this off, I know it's getting long. Um, okay, so I think that if you want to see another example from 11.2, let me know. Um, add enough of anything together. Um, you'll get a normal with the mean is the sum of the means and the variance is the sum of the variances and then I can take square root to get the standard deviation.